Main article. First mission to Raxus Prime. Kazdan Paratus is far more powerful than you. I do not expect you to survive. But if you destroy him, you'll be one step closer to your destiny. Darth Vader. To Starkiller as Raxus Prime was in the Tian hegemony in the Outer Rim, the trip took a considerable length of time, which gave Starkiller a chance to refresh and research the objectives. However, he was distracted, and frequently had to ask Proxy to repeat mission details that he had missed while deep in thought, and eventually retreated to the onboard meditation chamber to gather his energies. There was little information on Kazdan Paratus, and Proxy was unable to reproduce his image. Paratus was accredited by the files as having considerable skill at droid making, and during the Clone Wars, he was lured out of seclusion to study the Sis droid armies, all the while building his own droids to reinforce his troops. During a disastrous campaign, all his troopers had been killed, forcing Paratus to cobble together his own droid army to fight back. With no troopers in his forces, there was no one to obey Order 66 when it was issued, thus allowing Paratus to escape. Shortly afterward, Starkiller was called up to the cockpit by Juno just before arrival. Once within the atmosphere, they began searching for Paratus, eventually discovering his crude imitation of the Jedi Temple on the surface. Setting down as close to the temple as possible, given the treacherous junk pile landscape, Starkiller disembarked and progressed on foot. He focused entirely on the mission at hand, ignoring all other distractions. Updated by Juno of activity at a downed corvette near his location, Starkiller assumed that Vader's orders to leave no witnesses still stood and attacked the Rodian salvages, though he ignored most of the droids controlled by the planetary intelligence known as the Core. The scavengers likewise had intended to turn Starkiller in for a bounty issued by the Empire, presumably for his actions earlier. Meanwhile, he had Juno check the local Imperial records for information on the scavengers while he continued to perform recon. The corvette they were stripping was in Starkiller's path and would take too long to circumvent, so he attacked. After killing a Rodian sentry and entering the corvette, Starkiller made his way to engineering and activated the remaining engine with a pulse of force lightning, clearing his path to the temple. When asked by Juno whether he was creating a distraction or simply attracting attention, Starkiller simply replied to take her pick. Cautiously ascending to the junk temple's foyer, Starkiller was attacked by Kazdan Paratus droid sentries. He made short work of them, being used to duels with a sophisticated droid-like proxy. Starkiller cleared the foyer by blasting the droids out of the temple doors before being attacked by a massive junk golem. His battle with the golem tore through the junk temple, eventually reaching Paratus' mock Jedi Council chamber, replete with mannequins of long-dead Jedi Council masters. Starkiller disabled the golem and Kazdan Paratus then revealed himself, extricating himself from the golem's chassis, where he had been controlling it. Paratus was an Alina, a small being, but compensated with a four-limbed mechanical harness on his back. With the limbs offering him extra height and mobility, Paratus was able to wield his lightsaber pike with deadly skill. The mannequins of the Jedi Council Masters now activated, revealing themselves to be droids, and Starkiller was momentarily distracted by them. Paratus lunged at Starkiller, scoring a shallow cut along his forearm before the Darksider counted. With the mobility offered by his mechanical limbs, and his own skill with the Force, Paratus simply outpaced Starkiller, blocking all of the apprentice's attacks with his pike. However, Paratus was more vulnerable to Force Lightning without the protection of his droid shell, and Starkiller became concerned that the battle would end before it had truly begun, only to be attacked unawares by one of the Jedi Council Masters. The Jedi mannequins were combat ready, equipped with vibroblades and utilizing crude approximations of the lightsaber styles practiced by the original individuals. Disarmed by Plo Koon, Starkiller destroyed the droid with a force push and reclaimed his lightsaber just in time to deflect another of Paratus' attacks. Dividing his attention between Paratus and the mannequins, he fought back and destroyed all of them. The replicas of Mace Windu and Coleman K. Kaj he dismembered, Kit Fisto he melted. Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi he threw together and blasted out the window. Kiadi Mundi, Seiz 18, Agen Kola, and Shark T he destroyed with force lightning, and Stas Ali he beheaded. Finally, he flung the Yoda mannequin at Paratus, who was now distraught and weeping with the deaths of the masters. Starkiller now had the advantage over the mad Jedi. Evading and countering against Paratus' telekinetic assault, 
Starkiller pursued him up onto the upper supports for the council chamber's windows, parrying a lightsaber slash and deflecting a blast of force energy back at the Jedi. Paratus retreated to the chamber floor, casting a massive chunk of machinery at Starkiller, who in turn caught it and threw it back, crushing the Jedi underneath it. As Paratus lay dying, he lamented on his failure before expiring in a brilliant flash of force energy. Starkiller was actually moved to pity by the emotional display, though he quickly repressed it and departed. En route back to the Executor, Starkiller devoted some effort towards repairing Parata's shattered lightsaber pike, so as to present it as a trophy to Vader, but was unsuccessful and abandoned the effort, instead telekinetically disassembling and reassembling his own lightsaber while in meditation. However, his repose was interrupted by Vader's communication via proxy, who again dispatched Starkiller to the Jedi Temple for further training despite his apprentice's performance against Paratus.